Here's a super fun pedal board that I've put together with some of my favorite Boss pedals and the Friedman IRD. I've got them all mounted on a Nuex Bumblebee pedal board and I've got a T-Rex fuel tank tucked underneath that top tier. You can see the pedals on here on the bottom tier, a Boss SD1. It's the gold 50th anniversary edition, which I chose because one, it's gold, and two, when you bypass it, there's no signal leaking through like on the older SD1s. Then I've got a Made in Japan BF2, DM2, and DD2. The BF2 I love just because it's a sweet sounding modulation. It kind of reminds me of some of those mid to late 80s cult records. The DM2 I'm using for a darker slapback. The DD2 I'm using for a staunch rhythmic echo. They're all in front of the IRD. Uh, channel one's cleaner, channel two is dirtier on there. And that goes into the DD20. I've had this DD20 since it came out and it's the pedal that really helped me discover delay i have revisited this pedal recently and found that i love the pan delay so i'm just going to use it for a panning delay let's hear some sounds and then i will talk about the settings on here we'll start on the bridge pickup of this bell aurora <laughs> Friedman IR series is such a great combination of old school tube technology. The preamp is an all tube preamp. There's the two channels in there. There's the various voicing options to play around with. There is a built-in boost on there, but then you have power amp simulation and cab IR loading. I'm using my free IR, which is linked in the video description. So it makes doing a video like this really easy. It means that I can go direct with the power amp sims and the IR loading, but the true preamp means that it's gonna behave like a real amp when I hit the front of it with some pedals over here. So the SD1, I've got the level all the way up. I have the drive control above zero. I feel like just that tiny, tiny little bit of soft clipping in there really, really works well. And the tone is at around one o'clock if we were talking about the dials on o'clock. The BF2, I've got the two 
far left controls set exactly the same at one o'clock. And I've got these two set at 11 o'clock on there. I'll show you a fun trick where you can use this as a boost. Ronnie Latecro from the band TNT used to use the BF2 like this, where basically you turn the depth all the way down and then you use the manual control as a frequency specific boost. Uh, the DM2, as you heard in there, just like a little bit of analog slap. What it does, it does so well, but it doesn't do what the DD2 does, which is that really precise rhythmic echo. And, you know, I basically just have that set up so that I can play Pete Townsend's Give Blood and play the Gilmore part on there. I love the way that sounds. The DD2 is great for slapback as well, but again, it's a little brighter and more strident. And then just panning delay is awesome. I did say these are some of my favorite boss pedals, right? I think the two pedals that are missing on here for me anyway, and maybe I'll replace the DD20 with them at some point would be the DC2 Dimension. The Wazacraft version is awesome. And basically, if you look at the price and all the old issues with the old DC2, the Wazacraft version is, you know, I hate using the term better, but it's probably a more appropriate choice for a modern pedal board on there. So that for some stereo chorus. And then the new SDE3 for those Van Halen style delays. And since the SDE3 has stereo ins, I could come out of this into the DC2, get the stereo chorus happening and go in stereo to the SDE3. That might be a rig build for 2025 though. So uh, let me just run you through a few extra things that you can do on here. Let's hear what the SD1 does into the cleaner side of the IRD with the actual drive control up on there. And I'll start with the tone control all the way down because you can get some really sweet, smooth lead sounds out of an SD1. That sounds pretty boutique, right? It's just a case of turning the tone control down, setting the amp or the amp in a box a little bit cleaner and you can get that super smooth drive, which I really like and I've actually used on a lot of gigs that aren't specifically hard rock gigs. I do love this boosting a Marshall style amp, but into a cleaner amp, a lot of the time I've chosen that over more expensive overdrive. So yet another reason why the SD1 is awesome. Now on the BF2, if I turn the depth control all the way down, I can use the manual and the resonance basically to find a frequency specific boost on there. We'll hear it into a dirty sound. This works really well. It almost kind of sounds like a cocked wah. <laughs> a thing that I enjoy. It's really nice in combination with either the DM2 or the DD2 as well. So I've set the maximum delay time on the DM2 and it's really dark sounding, but it is pretty cool if you want a more laid back rhythmic effect on there. So something like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
And the DD2 really is the sound of an error. It's got such a distinctive tone and it really does a totally different thing to the DM2. I like the DM2 for all its kind of splatty crustiness, whereas the DD2 is precise, but still bandwidth limited enough where it doesn't mess with your main guitar tone too much. The DD20 is well we should talk about as well, because I've just been using it for the pan delay, but you can use it as a looper. There's the warp and twist modes on there. I think the analog mode sounds great, as well as just the stock mod delay and digital delay on there. Let's actually have a listen to the modulated delay. And there's another mode called smooth, which is kind of like diffuse delays on there. Uh, let's kick it in and we'll add a little bit more dirt. <laughs> delay though is just killer. If I wanted a dual delay on the DD20, it's a bit limited because you can only set the second delay at 100 milliseconds, which I always found a little bit odd. So I think if you wanted the Van Halen style, you know, 400 milliseconds one side, 800 milliseconds the other side, or you wanted the Halo style dotted eighth and quarter note style delay, an SDE3 might be a better choice, but you can still find DD20s for really reasonable prices out there. And I mean, it's just held up. I've done so many gigs with that pedal. It's a forever pedal for me. Anytime I fire it up and get into it, it both reminds me of why Boss stuff is great because it just kind of works, but there's also sounds that I kind of cut my teeth on with that. Whereas uh, the older Japanese stuff, these pedals are older than me. So when I initially came around to them, they were first starting to get a little bit of mystique in like the mid 2000s, but now they definitely have a lot of mystique around them. And I still think, you know, nothing else really sounds like an old BF2. The DD2 and the DM2 aren't perfect, but if you're chasing that character, they also just work. They do what they do so well. And you know, the SD1, uh, everyone needs to have an SD1 in their life. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these pedals and what else you would add to this board. This is definitely something that is gonna get revised and it's just basically a board to play around with and have some fun with. But I feel like I could definitely go and do a gig with just that on there and get some really great tones in a live setting. If you dig what I'm doing here on the channel and you wanna support me directly, links to my Patreon and the music that I make with my band Ragdoll are linked in the video description. Have a great day, go make some guitar noises. I will see you next time.